Sonic is my favorite video game franchise is a sentence I never thought I'd ever say. But after living, breathing, and sleeping Sonic for about five months straight, that statement has become true. I've played the good games, I've played the bad games, I've played the mediocre games, and I've watched every single piece of media about the guy. Including his first movie. <laughs> oh boy! Wasn't that an emotional roller coaster? If you somehow lived under a rock from early 2019 to early 2020, allow me to introduce you to this thing. Uh. Meow? <laughs> oh, come on. This is Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say this is some freaky abomination pretending to be Sonic the Hedgehog. When the original trailer for the first Sonic movie was released, this is what Sonic looked like. Obviously, people were enraged. Immediately, angry YouTubers, Twitter users, and neckbearded Redditors launched into making reaction videos, long-winded rants, and memes making fun of this god-awful design. Some fans even decided to redesign Sonic themselves to make him look better. And, in my opinion, they don't look much better. Some very few people tried their hardest to defend the design, to no avail. People still hated it. All this cyberbullying resulted in the movie getting delayed. Twice. I'm honestly surprised the film didn't get cancelled at this point. After getting delayed twice, Paramount came out with this spiffy new trailer for the exact same movie, but now with a massive overhaul. The original design was so hated that Paramount had to get help from Tyson Hess, a guy who did art for Sonic comics and some animated shorts. Sonic got completely redesigned, and he looked way better now. I mean, he... he <laughs> I mean, he looked like Sonic this time, so, you know, that's, a, that's an improvement. Despite this entire chain of events being an absolute train wreck, the Sonic fans came out on top and got what they wanted. See, kids? This is a perfect lesson that sometimes cyberbullying is the answer. Anyway, when the movie finally came out, it was pleasantly received by critics and general audiences alike. And it did amazing in the box office. At this point in time, it's got like over $309 million. That's insane. I mean, the movie did so well that it got itself a sequel. Only two years later, only two years later, they did a sequel. That's... Has that happened before? As of writing this, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 has gotten over 72 million dollars? Jesus. At this point, people seem very split on whether they prefer the first movie or the second movie. So I thought, why not review both movies separately and then directly compare the two and decide which one I prefer? So I did that. Sonic the Hedgehog follows Sonic, a little hedgehog boy who lives in a magical world inhabited by animal people. Sonic was born with the ability to run at the speed of sound, which is really cool. But in the words of Sonic, Turns out with great power comes great power hungry bad guys. So one day, Sonic and his caretaker Longclaw get attacked by an army of Echidna warriors. To keep Sonic safe, she sends him to Earth and tells him that if anyone ever tries to steal his power, he must use his magical rings to go to a mushroom land to be safe. Several years later, Sonic has become accustomed to living alone. He's built himself a little home in the woods and spends his days spying on the citizens of a little town called Green Hills. <gasps> Green Hill's like the king! One of his favorite people to spy on is a cop called Tom, or as Sonic likes to call him, Donut Lord. Why do you keep calling me Donut Lord? Because you talk to donuts, and then eat them if they get out of line. Again, fair. Tom has become extremely bored of Green Hills because nothing ever happens, so he's decided to move to San Francisco to become an actual police officer and save lives. When Sonic gets real depressed because he realizes he'll never be able to make any real friends or live a normal life, he accidentally causes a blackout for the entire Pacific Northwest. This scares the government so much that they decide to call in a crazy scientist to help them figure out what caused the power outage. And that scientist's name is... Dr. Robotnik. Also, Agent Stone is here too. Huh? Dr. Robotnik finds Sonic's home relatively quickly, so Sonic runs away to the only other place he feels safe. Tom's house. Tom hears a thud in his garage, and thinking it's a raccoon, he grabs his trink gun and goes searching. But instead of finding a raccoon, Tom instead finds a Sonic, and shoots him with his tranquilizer dart. This causes Sonic to drop his rings, opening a portal to San Francisco. His rings then conveniently land on the roof of the Transamerica building, so Tom and Sonic must go on a wacky family-friendly road trip to San Francisco to get Sonic's rings back before he gets caught by Dr. Robotnik. 
I'm gonna just get this out of the way. Robotnik and Sonic are the best parts of this movie. Ben Schwartz as Sonic was an amazing idea. Ben has this voice that sounds innocent and cocky at the same time, and it feels perfect for Sonic. And I know you're real! No, I'm not! And I don't know who came up with Jim Carrey as Robotnik, but they definitely deserve a raise. In interviews for this movie, Jim Carrey said he's trying to channel the kind of comedy from Ace Ventura and the Grinch, and it shows. It does not feel like Robotnik, but it's funny, so I don't care. Oh, my babies. <laughs> Look what came out of my egg sack. Every scene this guy is in is a treat. I bet Sonic fans were relieved to find out that Sonic was the main focus of this film. The main thing that I was worried about was that it would fall into the same trap that all these live action animation hybrid movies fall into. That trap being that the goofy animated character gets shoved to the sidelines by the main human characters. Take the Tom and Jerry movie for example. Rather than it being a Tom and Jerry movie, it's a movie about this girl trying to get a job at a hotel and planning a wedding featuring Tom and Jerry. But Sonic the Hedgehog doesn't fall into that trap. Sonic is more often than not at center stage, and that's a great thing because Sonic is really likable in this film. He doesn't act at all how he does in the games, which is honestly a positive because he's very obnoxious in the newer games. He acts more like a recluse, at least at the start of the film, which makes sense in context to the story. When Sonic was a little boy, he was told to keep his powers a secret, so he grew up being alone, hiding in his cave, spying on people. I mean, I wouldn't call it spying. We are all just hanging out, only I wasn't invited, and no one knew I was there. And talking to himself. But as the movie goes along and he becomes friends with Tom, he starts acting like the wisecracking Sonic we all know and love. I don't know a whole lot about James Marsden, I've only seen about four movies featuring him, but he does an amazing job working off of Sonic. Which is pretty impressive seeing as how he's working off of literal air the entire time. The way Sonic and Tom's relationship develops is very basic and predictable, but that doesn't mean it's not done well. That statement can honestly be true for the entire movie predictable, but pretty okay. In terms of writing, the movie is fairly 50-50, and I'm talking about every aspect of the writing. Dialogue, humor, and storytelling, it's all hit and miss. Though, there are significantly more hits than misses. When the movie's being a fast-paced, action-packed comedy, it's a blast. But as soon as the movie tries to be remotely serious, it falls flat on its face. There's this one part where Tom and Sonic are talking about bucket lists, and they're having a blast. It's genuinely fun to watch. I love this interaction so much. But then Tom mentions that he wants to move to San Francisco and become a real police officer, and Sonic immediately flips from having fun to freaking out at Tom, and it feels completely unwarranted. I see what they were going for, like Sonic gets mad at Tom for wanting to leave Green Hills because he has a perfect life there, a life that Sonic would have given anything to have, but Tom's just throwing it away. But it is not executed well in the slightest. Sonic goes from talking about what he wants to do with his life, to screaming at Tom for wanting to do something with his life. It would have been better if Sonic had like a gradual evolution to pure anger, but he goes from happy to angry in the less in less than less than a cut to another camera angle. <laughs> That's how fast it was. To be fair, this is the only scene this bad, but still. Every time they try to do something serious, they do it wrong. Get off me! Haha! <laughs> Nailed it! There are some moments that try to be heartwarming and cute, but it actually works. Not only is Sonic just an inherently cute character, but these moments are just written really well. Like the part where Sonic moves in with Tom and his wife Maddie, or the scene where Sonic gets his red shoes from the little girl. That scene was really adorable. Oh. Fun fact, did you know that they edited some scenes where Sonic doesn't have his red shoes, so he had them in the trailer? Not that big a deal, just thought it was neat. On the flip side, the humor is also pretty hit and miss. I honestly think it's exactly 50-50. Half of the jokes land, and half don't. If I'm being honest, I kind of prefer the more chill banter Sonic and Tom have. Like I already mentioned, the scene where Sonic and Tom are talking about bucket lists was fun until Sonic flips out. You're more like the jerk lord. Have you noticed the harpoon stuck in our gas? When I say I prefer the smaller bits of banter that Sonic and Tom have, I'm not saying that the big gags they set up aren't funny. They work. Sometimes. Alright, listen. I've been trying to ignore this as hard as I could, but I can't ignore this anymore. Sonic flosses. Twice. If you got a good cringe gland like me, it will only kinda bother you. But if you don't, I'm sorry. But in all seriousness, some of the gags are funny. Like how Tom's sister-in-law hates him and eventually gets tied up in her own house. She'll be fine. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. This is my house! 
The scene where Robotnik dances while analyzing one of Sonic's quills was pure gold. The part where Sonic feels bad for a turtle, so he runs while holding the turtle and then drops the turtle while he was running was hilarious. It killed me. <laughs> Have you ever felt so alive? This is great, you're doing amazing! But then there's the... I, I can't forgive the floss man. If he did it once, I'd be fine with it, but twice? He does it twice? I've mentioned this way earlier in this video, but Sonic looks great. I'm really happy that three quarters of the world cyberbullied this huge company into fixing their movie. Sonic is absolutely endearing. I've never really seen Sonic as cute. Not even classic Sonic, really. Yeah, uh-huh. But they managed to make Sonic look so cute in this movie. It's honestly super impressive that they went from this train wreck to this beautiful little boy that should be protected at all costs. I also like the little cheats they used. Rather than making Sonic's arms tan and having to figure out how to make it look natural, they made them blue because it not only looks more natural in real life, but it's also easier to animate. They cheated with his proportions as well. They made his calves, shoulders, and chest more pronounced to make his anatomy make more sense. And they also, uh, and this is absolutely genius, instead of having one big eye with two pupils because that would be horrendously scary in real life, they had his eyes separated but added a little tan strip in between his eyes so it looked like they were still connected. Not only does Sonic look great, but the visual effects look awesome as well. When Sonic gets really emotional, he gets all electrified and it, it, it looks amazing every time. The composition, the visual effects, it all looks awesome, especially in the action scenes. I especially love the scenes where Sonic goes so fast that everything around him pauses. Man, those scenes look so cool. If you still haven't seen the movie and you're still on the fence of whether you should Good you should, purely for the visuals alone. Although I really like a lot of parts of this movie, I will admit that the movie has flaws, like the forced drama and... Uh, the flossing. Though I think the action is great, the visuals are superb, and the dialogue and jokes are alright for most of the time. I wouldn't say that Sonic the Hedgehog is my favorite movie, it's probably not even top 10, but I will say I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. It is in fact the best video game movie I have ever seen, though that is not a very high bar to pass. Since Sonic the Hedgehog is a competent film with some heartfelt moments, funny jokes, and action-packed scenes, alongside beautiful visuals and really good acting, they obviously made a sequel. It honestly felt like they planned a sequel, seeing as how the movie had a slightly ambiguous ending and an after credit scene that everyone freaked out about. At the end of the first movie, there was an after credit scene where they teased a new character for the sequel, and that character was Tails. I normally wouldn't spout such a crazy spoiler like that, but it's to the point where everyone knows Tails is in the sequel, so it... whatever. According to most of the internet, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is better than the first movie in basically every single way possible. I mean, Sonic himself likes it, so... You know. <coughs> you wanna know what I think about the second movie? <laughs> well... Sonic the Hedgehog 2 strives to do everything the first movie did, but more. As we all know, Tails is here now, Robotnik is back from the weird mushroom land, Sonic has a weird wrinkly forehead now, and we even got HERO COME! Rubber than the rest of the rest of them, stronger than another. They go on with knuckles. I like turning on chuckles. I really flex my muscles. Ahem. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Yeah, Knuckles is here! And that is not a spoiler. He's all over the marketing, so you can't get mad at me. Sonic 2 starts right where the last movie left off, with Sonic trying to be a superhero called Blue Justice, and failing miserably. He then gets advice from Tom about how being a superhero isn't about having fun or taking care of yourself. Instead, it's about taking responsibility for other people. So Sonic decides to take it slow for a while and try all this hero business later. But he's soon forced back into action when Robot Sonic escapes from the mushroom planet with the help of a new friend, Knuckles the Echidna. When Sonic gets attacked by Knuckles, he gets saved by a little yellow fox with two tails, named Tails. Tails then explains that Knuckles has been searching for Sonic because he thinks he holds the key to something called the Master Emerald, which the Owl and Echidna tribes have been fighting over for centuries. The Master Emerald is able to grant its beholder godlike abilities, which is kind of a problem when Dr. Robotnik, a man who's gone absolutely insane, is after it. So Sonic and Tails set out to get the Master Master Emerald before Knuckles and Robotnik get it. Oh, there's also this wedding going on in Hawaii with Tom's sister-in-law or something. 
yeah, that that's the worst part of the film. I really like this plot. It's a perfect way to kind of tie in some of the lore from Sonic 3 and Knuckles while also integrating some of the long claw stuff from the first movie. I'm really glad they didn't abandon the long claw stuff. In fact, long claw appears way more in this movie than she did in the first movie, which is fine by me because I like long claw. Speaking of characters I like, Knuckles is amazing in this movie. Idris Elba does a surprisingly great job as Knuckles. Despite Idris Elba apparently being a really big celebrity, I don't know who he is, so I, he, he just, I don't know, I just don't know who he is. <laughs> Knuckles personality is perfect. He's the typical fish out of water character, but he's played completely straight, which leads to some absolutely hilarious interactions. Just chilling, watching TV. Oh. Dot, 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 dot. I also really like that we get to see his backstory, because as far as I know, I there we haven't seen his backstory before knuckles also has a really cool character arc that he goes through i mean if you played the game that he was introduced in you'd know what it is but i still think that it was written really well him and robotnik have an amazing dynamic <laughs> yeah that's more where that came from Huh? Robotnik is amazing here. Take the Robotnik from the first movie and amp it up to 100. Robotnik has gone absolutely insane, and it's hilarious. I already liked his whoo, look what came out of my egg sack line, but there is so many lines you can take out of context and they will make no sense. So glad it didn't cut off my mustache. Falsa, which is Latin for wrongo. He's on the okay to kill list. Shoot the missiles, make a decision. You mentioned... Oh, oh, oh! Jim Carrey takes his Ace Ventura style of humor and multiplies it by like a thousand. Some would say he takes it a little too far. Like he's too crazy this time. And I see where they're coming from, but I love it. I just can't get enough of Jim Carrey, man. He's one of my favorite actors ever. And I feel like he's rightfully earned his retirement. One character I feel they utilize pretty badly was Tails. Uh -oh. Not saying they ruined his character or anything, I just think they used him poorly. He's there purely for the purpose of exposition. He tells us the history of the Master Emerald, gets knocked out, flies his tornado a bit, and that's about it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Close one. <laughs> He's still adorable. Tails' relationship with Sonic was really cute, and it's fun to see him grow into getting more confident, but he sadly got no time to truly shine. Though Tails' voice is freakishly similar to his voice in the games, and that's because it's the same person. Colleen O'Shaughnessy reprises her role as Tails, and that makes me so happy. Colleen has done the only Tails voice that I like. Every other Tails voice can go poopy, I don't care, I don't like them, I don't like any of them. But Colleen does an amazing job here. I kinda think Tails got completely completely overshadowed by Knuckles, which kinda sucks, but hey, what are you gonna do? Maybe Tails will get more time to shine in the third movie. Who knows? As for Sonic, he's exactly the same as he was in the first movie, except with more pop culture references. We got The, the Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier, Vin Diesel, Diesel and the, the Rock, Rock. Poltergeist, Poltergeist, and Clifford the Big Red Dog? Alright, I, I kinda like that one. I guess it makes sense that he'd make more pop culture references because he's been living on Earth for longer, so he's watched more movies and stuff, but still, I think it's kind of obnoxious how every other line he says is a pop culture reference. Sonic acts exactly the same as he did at the end of the first film. Not exactly a bad thing because I like this version of Sonic, but it's kinda lame that he doesn't develop at all. His wacky, wisecracking personality stays prominent from title card to credits. I mean, Sonic's never been one for super in-depth characters, characters and character arcs, but Knuckles and Tails have one, so why can't Sonic have one? Though it's gotta be hard to give every character a character arc when the movie moves so fast! I didn't mention it because I didn't have anything to say about it, but the pacing of the first movie was fairly consistent. I wouldn't say the pacing was good, but it wasn't bad. I personally think it felt too slow for a Sonic film, but overall it was, it was alright. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 wastes absolutely no time. This movie is fast. I mean, the main antagonist gets introduced five minutes minutes into the movie, like they waste literally no time. Now this, I'm split on. The faster pace is definitely a welcome change, but because of this, it causes the pacing to feel kind of inconsistent in some parts. It's very clearly trying to be a goofy, fast-paced action movie, but the pacing is really inconsistent. There are some scenes that should have just been cut from the movie. Not only would cutting these scenes make the movie shorter, but the plot would be mostly the same. <laughs> there are parts of this movie that just waste your time. 
time. If you're trying to make an action movie, why have this weird, pointless subplot about Tom's sister-in-law getting married in Hawaii? <laughs> All it does is waste time. I, I, I mean, it's fun. It's a fun sequence, but it goes on for way too long. I guess they needed to include the humans in some way, but they could have done it in a less intrusive way. Like, the plot just comes to a halt and it stops being a Sonic movie and it becomes a movie about a wedding going wrong. <laughs> Though the action scenes in this action movie look absolutely beautiful. The character animations, the visual effects, the composition, and the sound design are all phenomenal. Oh my god, I love the action scenes in this movie! I thought the visuals would suffer, seeing as how it's three animated characters instead of one. But man, this movie looks great. It looks as good, if not better, than the first movie. Little nitpicks about Sonic's new character model aside, all three of the titular characters look great. The animation is so expressive and fluent. The characters all are integrated into the real world so seamlessly. Who would have thought that animating the characters like they're actually cartoons instead of trying to make them look as realistic as possible kind of makes them fit into the real world better? The action scenes, man, they're so... AWESOME! One thing I wish was improved from the first movie was the writing. Now, it is better, but not much better. I said Sonic 1 was about 50-50, well, Sonic 2's writing was like 60-40. Most of the jokes land pretty well, but there are quite a few stinkers in here. I like the PIECE OF SHITAKI PLANET joke. Get it? Cause it's like a mushroom. I did have a big stupid smile on my face the entire time, but the majority of my enjoyment came from the action scenes, and the rest of my enjoyment it came from the novelty of seeing Sonic Tails and Knuckles on the big screen. I do like how they went more into the comedy with this one, but they still got a ways to go before I'd like to say it's chef kiss worthy. Though I am shallow, so the references made me happy. If you showed me this movie about a year ago, I wouldn't have understood any of the references. But seeing this movie after my five months of research, I understood all of them. They do focus primarily on Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but it gives other Sonic games some love too. Sonic does some iconic poses from the games, Tails has his Miles Electric from Sonic Unleashed. They make a Sonic 4 reference. You know, y'all can just forget that game even happened and no one would judge you, right? You know that, right? Mean Bean Machine, SA2. They even bring up Knuckles' love for grapes, which was only ever mentioned in the Sonic 3 manual. This movie has some really deep cuts. I'm not gonna mention all of the uh, easter eggs. If you want to do that, go watch someone's easter eggs explained video. I, 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 don't, I don't care to do that. The final act of this movie was amazing. The wedding detour in the middle slows down the pace by a lot, but it immediately picks up when the characters go to Labyrinth Zone. Seeing Sonic and Knuckles fighting on the big screen was such a sight for sore eyes, man. I'm trying my hardest to avoid major spoilers, but believe me, the final action sequence was absolute insanity in the best way possible. Seeing Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles all on screen at once made my stinky ape brain go No matter the quality of this movie, I would have ended up liking it because I like these characters, but luckily this is a really good movie. Not only do I think this is a good Sonic movie, which is more than I can say about the first movie, but it's also a really fun action movie. The action scenes are great, the visuals are better than superb, and the acting is still great if not better than the first movie. Sure, the comedy still isn't the best, and there's a completely pointless wedding subplot, but the action entirely makes up for it for me. I freaking love this film. Flaws and all, this movie is just a fun time. I guess now it's time to compare the two. So, in my opinion, both movies are good. Both have pros and both have cons. I think Sonic looks great in both movies. Tails and Knuckles look great as well. The acting is great in both movies, though both movies have the flaws, so. For a little bit, this was a pretty hard decision to make for me, but after some contemplating, I decided that I prefer Sonic the Hedgehog 2. The pace is faster, though a little inconsistent. The story feels more like a Sonic story. The action scenes were much more entertaining, and there were more of them. And the animation and visual effects look a lot better than the first movie. Sure, it might be a little harder for outsiders of the Sonic fandom to understand the movie, but it's a good movie. Yeah, I, I like it, so. <laughs> the only big complaint I have with the second movie is, what the heck happened to Ozzy? Ozzy appears quite a bit at the start of the movie, but when Sonic gets attacked by Knuckles and Robotnik, subsequently getting the house demolished, the dog disappears. Come on, Sonic, check on Ozzy, he's gonna run away! 